video, we'll be going over the worksheet to see if you should fill in IRS Form 6251, which you can find in the instructions for Schedule 2, Line 1. This is the tax form that you must use to calculate an alternative minimum tax if you're subject to that. So this worksheet helps taxpayers understand whether or not they need to complete Form 6251 and pay any alternative minimum tax, which would then be reported on Schedule 2, Line 1. So this worksheet is fairly straightforward. We've gone ahead and populated these fields. We'll walk through them, and then we'll take another look after we've changed some numbers around to see how that might impact our decision making. So let's start with Line 1. In Line 1, are you filing Schedule A? So uh, if you select no, you would skip lines one and two, and then you would go to your Form 1040. You would take your uh, line 11, which is your adjusted gross income, and from that, you would subtract your qualified business income deduction or QBI deduction. That's the line 13 number. So you would subtract that from your adjusted gross income, or AGI. You would enter that amount right here. So, and as an aside, I'm going to mention quite a few forms in this video. We'll put links in the show notes to both articles and videos that we've created that specifically go over these forms. So, so again, we, we would take the QBI deduction, which you... Uh, calculate on either IRS form 8995 or 8995-A, depending on whether or not you qualify for the simplified QBI calculation. You would subtract that from your adjusted gross income to arrive at this line three number. But our hero John Doe is uh, scheduling or filing Schedule A, so we're going to enter the amount that's on line 15 instead and that's the taxable income after the standard deduction and QBI deductions. So in this case, we entered $250,000. Now we're gonna go into line two and we're going to the, enter the amount from schedule A, line seven. This happens to be the total taxes paid and included uh, as part of your itemized deductions. So your state and local taxes, whether you choose the income tax or the property or the, uh, the sales tax method, your property taxes, uh, real estate taxes, all of those taxes paid uh, are totaled on line seven. So in this case, the does ha have $5,000 that they reported as paid. So line three becomes $255,000. In line four, we're going to enter any tax refunds from Schedule 1, Lines 1, and 8Z. So uh, line one happens to be the line that you would report taxable refunds, credits, or offsets. And line 8Z happens to be a placeholder for other income sources that are not regularly reported on Schedule 1. So if you're reporting a tax refund on a line 8Z, that for some reason isn't included on line one, you'll enter that here. So for this uh, exercise, we said $5,000, which we're going to subtract from our line three amount, and we arrive at $250,000. For line six, we're going to enter the amount based on the filing status. So you can see that I've entered 126500 that is the amount that we've allocated for uh, our married couple filing a joint return. So uh, now in line seven, it asks, is the line amount or is the amount on line five more than the amount on line six? So in this case, it is. So we need to keep going. But if this amount were, say, $100,000, then we could just stop right here. It would be very clear that we do not owe alternative minimum tax, and you can leave the line one on schedule two blank, 
You don't need a complete IRS form 6251. So it is, uh, it is larger than the, the amount on line five is larger than the amount on line six. So we need to keep going. This isn't necessarily an in indication that you have to pay alternative minimum tax. We just need to keep going through the rest of this uh, worksheet. So we subtracted that. We arrive at 123,500. And this time in line eight, we're going to enter a different number. So this is $1,156,300. And we put that in line eight. So now we go back to line five. Is the line five amount greater than the line eight amount? So in this case, no, it's not. We skip line 10, as you can see, and we're skipping line nine as well. We'll enter the amount from line seven into line 11, and then we'll go to line 12. Now, if we had said yes, we would be, enter, we would be subtracting this amount from this larger amount, and we'll do that in a moment. So we've arrived at the line 11, or line 11 equals the amount from line 7 that we've carried down. So now we're going to go to line 12. So line 12 asks, is the line 11 amount more than $220,700? So if this answer were yes, we would have to complete IRS Form 6251 to determine whether or not we owe alternative minimum tax. So in this case, it's not. We uh, simply multiplied this figure by 26% and we arrive at $32,110. Now for line 13, we're going to add a couple of things. So we're going to add the uh, line 16 number from your 1040 form 1040 SR or your form 1040 NR so that line 16 happens to be the tax however we're going to back out the tax that's reported on IRS form 4972 that's the tax on lump sum distributions and it's actually check mark number two on line 16 so there are specific check marks for different tax forms that may be reported there so we're going to back that out of our tax and we're going to add the schedule to line two, which happens to be the excess advance premium tax credit repayment that would be calculated on IRS form 8962. So we're going to add those two numbers. Uh, if you use schedule J, then there is a different calculation. You would have to refigure your tax without using schedule J and then use that figure in this calculation. So for this scenario, we simply said $15,000 was our total tax after we've backed out the tax on lump sum distributions and then added back in any tax based on the excess advanced premium tax credit repayment. So now it asks, is the line 12 amount more than the line 13 amount? So. In this case, it is, it is more, so we would have to complete IRS Form 6251 to determine whether or not we owe alternative minimum tax. If this number, if we had calculated a tax bill that was $35,000, then we would not. That would be the tax. We don't need to c calculate any alternative minimum tax and then we would just be able to proceed with the rest of our income tax return. Uh, let's go through one scenario. Let's just imagine the line five happens to be uh, $1,250,000. We'll ignore the rest of the calculations that got us to this number. We're only going to change this. So now we basically do the same thing, except now we're going to have a bigger number here. And now we're going to compare the line five number to this number, in which case line five is bigger. We're going to subtract line eight from line five. And
we arrive at 93,700 dollars. Now we're going to multiply that number by 25 percent. And we're going to enter the smaller of that amount or the line 26 amount. And that amount happens to be $23,425. Now we're going to add lines 7 and 10. So line 7 is the $1,123,500. And we arrive at... One million one hundred and forty six thousand nine hundred and twenty five. So now that we've calculated recalculated line eleven, we're going to go to line twelve. Is this amount more than two hundred and twenty thousand seven hundred? The answer is clearly yes. So we don't need to go any further. We would simply uh, start working on IRS form 6251 to calculate our alternative minimum tax liability if we're subject to that. So that's all we have for this video. As I mentioned, we're going to put links to articles and videos that we've created uh, with for the schedules and forms that are mentioned in this video. We'll put them in the show notes for your reference. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, you can either do that through one of the pages uh, with with the article, like an article page, or you can go to our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com. You can type in any tax form that you're searching for, and the odds are pretty high that we've written an article about that uh, that tax form. And you should see a subscribe button as you go to the the page. If you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, comments, or if there's an idea that you have for a video you'd like to see in the future, please don't hesitate to drop a note in the comment section. Thank you very much and have a great day.